Hi, I'm Chelsea with She Sews Seams, and today I want to walk you through the easy, awesome pattern by Patterns for Pirates Company called the Walk the Plank PJ Bottoms. This is a fantastic beginner project. If you've never sewn a garment before, this would be a great go-to. The pattern is free on their website. You just go and add it to your cart and check out as normal, and then you can download it and piece it together at home. The reason I love this pattern is it comes in both adult and youth sizes. The youth sizes range from three months to size 14, and the adult sizes go from extra, extra small to 3X. It's a wonderful pattern. It's a great thing to make if you're wanting to gift it to somebody, or if you just wanna make pants for your whole family. So let's get into it. The Walk the Plank PJ Bottoms from Patterns for Pirates Company. The first most important step you wanna follow when making a garment is to wash and dry your fabric the way that you plan to wash and dry that fabric once the garment is sewn. Just a quick note about washing and drying your fabric, cottons and flannels tend to shrink a little bit, so if you are going to be washing and drying before sewing, I suggest maybe adding a quarter yard onto your measurement that's required for that size. It just gives you a little bit of extra leeway in case you have some shrinking of your fabric. This turns out to be a large pattern no matter what size you cut it in because you're cutting only one pattern piece. You'll cut two of these on the mirror image and I'm going to show you how to do that right now. When you buy your fabric at the fabric store, it's going to come folded this way where your selvages, which is this part right here, are going to be matched up on both sides. For this particular project, what we want to do is open up that fabric and make this end meet the bottom end of your fabric. So you're folding it along the length. As you can see here, my grain line did not change because my selvages are still touching each other. I just folded it a different direction. The next part is you wanna lay your pattern right on top of that fabric. Make sure everything is straight and once it is, it's okay to go ahead and cut your pattern out. I like to use a rotary cutter and a cutting mat to cut my pieces out. I feel like it helps with my accuracy and it keeps things nice and straight. And I'm cutting through two layers of fabric here and that's going to give me two mirror images, which is exactly what I need to make these pants. The last thing you wanna do before finishing up this part is we're going to mark these notches. I like to cut into my fabric just about a quarter of an inch. And the two notches are going to note that you're looking at the back of your pattern. This is the back of your pants. And the single notch denotes the front of your pants. This is an important step that you shouldn't skip because it will come in handy later on in the project. Let's jump into step one, and that is that I'm going to sew up what's called a memory hem on each of the hems of my pant legs. What that means is I'm going to press it up one inch on my ruler and I'll just double check that as I go. And what a memory hem does is it's marking your fabric with a crease to help you when you go to hem your pants later on in the project. Because at that point, when it's time to hem the pants, you will have already sewn them into a circle. And that can be a little tricky for a beginner to be able to manage. So what they're telling you here is to go ahead and press it up one inch, and that way it'll be ready to go when it's time to hem the pants. So that's step one, already done. We are ready to move on to step two on the project. What I've done here is I've laid my pant piece with the top at the left and the bottom at the right. And what I'm gonna do is fold this over so the right sides are touching. I'm gonna undo my memory hem at this point, match up my seams, and you can either use clips or pins to keep your fabric held together. I like to use clips. And what we're gonna do is take this to the sewing machine. The seam allowance for this project is one half of an inch. So I'm going to sew one half of an inch of a straight stitch all the way down this inseam. I'm gonna do that for both pant legs. Remember when starting to sew, you always wanna start with a back stitch to lock in your stitches and then follow that one half inch seam allowance all the way down.
as you can see, we've got a nice seam right here. Now, the next step is we wanna finish that seam. And there's several different ways to do this. If you have access to a serger in your sewing space, that's my favorite finishing technique, and that's the technique I'm gonna to use today. But if you don't have a serger, that's okay. They have other options. You could use a zigzag stitch to run along the edge of this. You could also do an overcast stitch on your machine, or you can do French seams, which are also a beautiful finish. There's plenty of options if you do not have a serger, so don't worry. To finish the seams on this project, I'm gonna use my Baby Lock Celebrate Serger. What is a serger, you ask? Great question, let me tell you. It essentially does three things at the same time. It's gonna be sewing a straight stitch along the seam. It's going to be using these knives right here to cut your fabric and make a nice clean edge on the edge of your fabric. And the last thing it does is these four spools of thread are going to be casting an overcast stitch around the edge of your fabric. And what that does on this particular project is it keeps your fabric from fraying as you wash and wear the garment. But here's how it works. I'm gonna lift my presser foot, lift my knives, slide my fabric in, lower the presser foot, and then just start stitching. You can see that the knives are cutting that fabric as I go, and it's creating a nice clean edge on my seam that will keep it from coming unraveled as you wear this garment. Here's how the surged edge looks when it's complete. So beautiful and clean. I absolutely love my serger. Repeat this step on both of the leg inseams and then we'll be ready to move on to the next step. Once you have these two pant legs sewn together, we're gonna take one and turn it right side out. So stick your arm in there and pull it all the way through. The next step of this project is we're gonna sew the crotch of the pants. So what we need to do is take this leg and slide this tube into that leg, matching your seams as you go. So push it through, find your seam line and match it with the other seam line. And then I like to give it a good shake. To kind of what I'm looking to do in this step is I want to match up my inside seams right here. And I like to do what we call nesting the seams. And what that means is I'm going to take one of these seams and go to the right and one of these seams and go to the left. Then lift your fabric and make sure that things are nice and straight and then place your clip. This will ensure that your seams are nice and even as you sew through this part of the process. Now here's where those notches that we cut at the beginning of the project come in handy because you see how these match up nice and perfect? That's what I want. I'm gonna clip this over here. You can use as many clips as you feel comfortable with. If you're brand new to sewing, you might wanna use more than I do and that's totally fine. Whatever keeps your fabric where you need it to be so you can sew the seam properly. And you can see here on the back, I've got two notches. So on this project, a single notch notes the front of the pants and the two notches note the back of the pants. And all I'm gonna do here is take this to my sewing machine and sew a straight stitch around this swoop. Remember to start this step with a back stitch and make sure you're staying on that half inch seam allowance the whole way around. When you get to the part where you've nested your seams, take your time, take your clip out, make sure everything is aligned properly, flatten it with your fingers, and keep going. You can see I've sewn the swoop here. I'm gonna go over to my serger and we'll finish this seam just as we've done with the inseams. Take your time when you're serging and make sure that none of your fabric is getting tossed up into this seam because then it'll cut a hole in your project and that can be really frustrating to try and fix. So just take your time, stop every few inches, reassess, stack your fabrics again, and then keep going. All right, let's turn these pants out and see how they look so far. They should look like pants at this point. Okay, we've got something resembling pants here, and guess what else? You are over halfway done with this project at this point. See how easy this is? You've got this. Let's keep going.
This pattern calls for knit elastic, which is a soft, stretchy, really comfy elastic to have in a waistband. Make sure you double check the pattern for two specific things. Depending on the size of pants that you're making, you'll need a different width of elastic. For the size that I'm making today, the pattern calls for one and a half inch wide knit elastic. The other thing that's helpful in the kid size pattern is it tells you the size, the length to cut it for the size that you're making. Now for the adult pants, you may have to do a little bit of measuring on your body and see what feels good. For the size that I'm making, I'm going to need 26 inches of this one and a half inch wide knit elastic. So the next step, once you've cut your elastic, is we're going to zigzag stitch by butting these ends together and clipping it to make sure that it stays put. What I like to do with my zigzags is I'll go down the seam, back up through it, back down and back up. So it's a forward stitch, a reverse stitch, a forward stitch and a reverse stitch. This may be a little bit of overkill, but I don't want this elastic to come apart because then I'm gonna have to fix the pants. So I just try and hit it on the front end with lots of extra secure stitches. As you can see here, I've matched up my two ends right next to each other and I've centered them on my presser foot. And I'm gonna go to my machine settings now and select a zigzag stitch. And I'm actually going to lengthen the width of the stitch so that I make sure that I'm hitting both pieces of elastic as I stitch. So I'm gonna put it up to a five. Just take your time on this step. Make sure you're hitting one side on one piece of the elastic and the other side is hitting the other piece of the elastic. This is what's going to join these two ends together. We want to make a circle. Once you reach the end, I like to just back stitch and you can push your pedal down to make this back stitch go a little faster. I backstitch all the way back up that seam. Then I'm gonna come back down. And at this point, my elastic is getting nice and strong with these stitches. Backstitch all the way back up one more time. And then cut your thread. See how nice and strong that elastic is? That's exactly what we want. The next step in the process is we're gonna mark our quarter points on both the piece of elastic and on the top of our waistband. Now, before I get into that, let me explain why we mark quarter points and what we're actually doing on this step. So when you mark a quarter point on a circle, what it's gonna do if it's a stretchy circle like this knit elastic is when I go to attach it to my waistband, which is significantly longer than my elastic piece, is it's going to evenly distribute my stretch between each of those points. Why that's important is when you sew these together along this seam, you don't wanna have one side of the pants that's really pulled tight with the elastic and then the other side will end up being very loose. We want even distribution of that stretch to make the pants both fit well and be comfortable. So let's talk about how to mark our quarter points. What I'm gonna do is mark my first point right along this zigzag stitch and let it hang from my finger, pull it straight down, and I will have the second quarter point, which is halfway across from the first one. The next step is to let this hang from your finger again, match up those two clips that you just put on there, add another clip, and then one at the bottom. That's going to give you four even quarter points. Let's do the same thing on our pants. Now I've already got my front and back quarter points because I've got my seams, which notes the front and the back of my pants. So I'll mark those with a clip. And then if I pull these together and match up those clips, I can mark them with these clips on the quarter points. Now again, this waistband is significantly wider than my knit elastic. The point of that is once we start sewing, we're gonna stretch that elastic out so that it matches the width of my pants. It's gonna be a little bit of an arm workout, but it's worth it in the end because again, it's gonna evenly distribute our stretch across the waistband of our pants. Now on this step, I don't like to keep my clips in. I will switch these out for pins because clips are good for holding things together unless you're pulling on them because obviously a clip goes like this and things can just slip right through. 
with a pin and it's actually going through your fabric. I like to use that on this step. Now, if you choose to do it this way, just make sure you keep an eye on those pins so that they don't go through your knives and your needles as you're serging because that will cause problems on your machine and you don't want that to happen. For this step, I'm going to find the back of my pants, which is right here. Take the seam that I made with my zigzag stitch and match it up. I'm gonna take both of those clips out and replace them with a pin. And you want this to line up right at the top edge of your pants. You want your elastic to match the waistline of your pants. Now see how this doesn't quite make it to this? That's okay. I'm going to pull it anyway because as I'm sewing, I will pull both of those pieces at the same time. Okay. When I pull on this, do you see how this is very loose right now? When I pull on it though, it's gonna match up perfectly. And that's gonna create the cinch in your waist that you want to make the pants look nice. Let's go to the serger and I'll show you how to do the next step. I like to start this process close to a pin, but not right at a pin. But maybe two inches or so before you hit that pin, slide the material in, lower your presser foot, and on this step, we wanna turn our knives off. We do not want that to cut our elastic because it will weaken it. We just wanna run a nice surged edge along the waistband of these pants. So now that I know that I'm already marking where my pin is, I'm gonna keep my finger there, but take the pin out just to make sure that I'm not gonna mow over it with my serger. Sew an inch or two of stitches just to get yourself established with the stitch. Then find this other pin, and we're going to stretch a little bit to get there. Pull it nice and taut. Here's the tricky part. This is probably the trickiest part of this project. You're gonna pull back on your elastic, but you're also gonna put your other hand in front of your needles and pull in that direction at the same time. Try and do this with the same amount of distribution of your pull, and that will help your fabric move through nice and easy. Keep on going. If you do not have a serger, you can do the same finish with a zigzag stitch or an overcast stitch on your regular sewing machine. It's the same exact process. One more time. Pull the other side at the same time. And once you get back to where you started, just cross over those stitches for maybe a half an inch. And then you can just veer off the side. Look at this beautiful waistband that we created. You the next step of this process you can do on your regular sewing machine by using either a straight stitch, a zigzag stitch, any sort of decorative stitch that you might want. You can also finish this on a cover stitch machine if you like. We're going to fold that elastic down, load this into the machine, and just as we did with the serger where we pulled the elastic taut while we sewed it, I'm gonna do the same thing for this step. And what we're doing is securing this edge to the pants, and that's going to create an enclosed waistband. You could use many different stitches to do this part. I'm gonna use a straight stitch today. And the reason that this works, even though I'm sewing with a knit elastic, is I'm gonna be pulling that fabric taut while I sew it. So it's going to bunch back up once I'm done. The main point of this part is to keep your fabric pulled nice and tight so that you don't see any of the gathers that are currently sitting right here on the fabric. You can also use a twin needle to do this. You could use a zigzag stitch, or you could finish this on a cover stitch machine. However makes you happy is how you should finish this. I'm gonna load a back stitch, pull my fabric nice and tight, and start sewing my straight stitch. And I sew this right through my serging. Once you go as far as your arms will let you, stop, realign things, stretch it out, and make sure that your fabric is pushed down nice and evenly, and then keep going. As you can see, I'm coming up on the very back seam here. And one little trick that I like to do when I'm making pants for my kids is I'll take a piece of the scrap fabric, fold it in half and serge both sides. This is gonna serve as a little tag that I'm gonna insert as I'm finishing up my seams so that they know very quickly when they put these pants on, which is the front of the pants and which is the back. When you've made it all the way around, finish with a back stitch, 
cut your thread and then pull them out and let's see how this waistband turned out. I think that turned out really nice. If you pull it, it's got good stretch to it, but it resolves right back to where it needs to be. All right, friends, we're on the last step of our project. Let's hem these pants and finish them up. Remember that memory hem that we sewed at the very, very beginning? Well, that's still in the bottom of our pants and that's what makes this next step so easy. All we have to do is find a way to either finish the edge or if you want to, you can just fold this down one half of an inch, press it, and then fold it one more half of an inch and sew along this seam line right here. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually just serge around this raw edge and then fold it down along my memory hem and also a hem right along that seam. Either way is totally fine. To do this hem, I would turn your pants inside out, fold down along your memory hem or along your pressed hem that you may have created with your iron, load it into your machine, and I'm gonna sew right along this surged seam. Finish with a back stitch and then repeat that process on the other pant leg. Look at you, you just sewed some pajama pants. I can't wait for my son to try these on. He is the biggest Pokemon fan ever. If you wanna see more tutorials like this, please hit the subscribe button, like, follow, comment. I love your support, I appreciate it so much. I'm happy to make more tutorial videos. Sewing is so fun. Thanks for following along.